a big part of depression, sadness, and anxiety, it's because we're not living our soul's desire. Conformity is the death of our inspiration. It's the death of our creativity. When we conform, we have to do what is our heart's desire, what's innately us, even if it looks crazy as heck to somebody else. Hey everyone and welcome to the Academy Podcast with the number one international best-selling author and multi-award winning success and life coach, Camille Shah. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking this opportunity to grow together with me, Camille Shah, and my guests on this program. Each episode of the Academy Podcast is filled with insights and wisdom from my guests, which I believe can have a profound impact on the way we live our lives. Without further ado, let's dive in. Hello, my lovely people, and welcome back to another episode of the Academy Podcast with me, Camille Shah. My hope is that this week brings you joy, happiness, and above all, peace. You might be joining us today while you're on your commute, daily exercise, or simply chilling at home, okay? Whatever it is and wherever you are, I'm here to tell you that this episode will be exciting and, dare I say, explosive, okay? Each time I reconnect with our guest today, who is a great friend of mine, by the way, I feel super energized and I learn something new, okay? You'll find out why in a minute. Joining me today is Stacy Henry Carr. Stacy is an ex corporate leader who now helps people identify, interrupt, and replace blockers with living more meaningful and intentional lives. She is a certified international life coach, certified rapid transformational therapy practitioner, a hypnotherapist, and a transformational speaker. She is a mother, a wife with a positive approach to life. She practices authentic leadership and servitude in everything she does. Her 22 years of corporate leadership, training, and career development have equipped her with a proven track record to help guide others in their journey of discovery. She has always had a passion for helping others become their best selves. Her self-published book, Live Your Truth and Break the Cycle, is one of the ways she authentically serves people. She creates healing meditations and writes inspiring articles. She believes that her true legacy to her children will be the lives she has touched by motivating and inspiring others to change. Stacy is also a podcast host on her very own show called Butterfly Effect, Breaking All Generational Cycles. Welcome, Stacy. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for that <laughs> very full introduction. And I miss talking to you, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And I, again, Stacey, like I said, uh, people tuning in, if, you, um, if you're if you just connecting now with Stacey, uh, I'm just going to give you a, a bit of a backstory. If you already have been on the show and um, followed us on Instagram, we've done a few Instagram lives. We've done a few webinars. Uh, Stacy is a good friend of mine, and we connected uh, way back when we were students at the Jay Shetty Certification School, right? Yes. Uh, and and <laughs> it's been a gonna, while. It's been a while. It's been about twenty twenty, right? Yes. Twenty twenty at the in during the pen, uh, height of the pandemic, pandemic uh, should I say? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to share quickly a story of how we connected and why yes. I I I don't know. I, I'm I'm saying this in a positive way. I latched on to Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. when when we had our um, coaching sessions together, the, the energy was there. We just we just hit it off, and I was like, "You are my people, Stacey." Yeah, and immediately we just... you you too, Camille. <laughs> immediately, immediately we hit it off. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we just connected since. And um, anyway, I, I'll, I'll bring you on, Stacey. We'll we'll talk a bit more about the work, the fantastic work that you do in helping people. Uh, because I want people to get connected with you. And uh, if you don't mind just sharing with us about your journey of uh, where you were before, you know, we mentioned about you being a corporate job yes. uh, before, but you made that transformation to helping people, really helping people. So if you yes. don't mind just sharing your story, Stacey. Absolutely. I'm so happy that, you know, to always share the story because it there's a lot of hope in it. 
And it also comes with some punches, right? And that's what life is all about. But I used to um, work as a leader in a call center where I had about 100 people who reported to me. So I was a manager of some sort, you know, a leader. Wow. And I did that for many, many years. I, I did that. I ranked up through this company. I started with the company when I was around 24 or so. I was really young. And um, I was there for 20 years. And I ranked up through this company and I'm there and life is good and money is good. And it provided me with the security, you know, that financial security. And at that time, I needed that because with some of the things that's hap- that had happened in my life, I just I needed that um, independence. And we all know the when you have money, money will bring you that independence because you can live the way you want to live without having to depend. And I'm putting the quotes up, depend on people. So I'm in this corporate setting for 20 plus years. I want to say, Camille, it was around the 15th year that I knew that this, it wasn't it anymore. So listen to what I'm saying. The 15th year, I started to feel uncomfortable. Things weren't as smooth. Things didn't feel aligned. It just wasn't what, it wasn't for me anymore. But guess what was for me? The money was, (laughs) you know, it had good salary and benefits and all of that. So I, I hung in there. And while I was hanging in there, um, it w- I was very uncomfortable. I was miserable. But what I was trying to do was find ways that I could, I, I, I could be happy or I could feel some of the internal, the, the real joy. And so I started doing little programs with my employees. I actually started coaching my employees, um, not from a performance perspective, but ready for it? Life. <laughs> right? I started doing life things with them. My best days with my employees were when they would come and they looked sad or out of alignment and we would talk and it had nothing to do with work. It was about life, maybe relationship, maybe children, whatever that was. And I was able to give them insights and it just, that just felt good. So I started going to work for that, for the employees. I started going to work to be able to give my employees the support they needed from a life, life coaching perspective. And it was the best. So then I did that, but the truth is in 2016, I couldn't take it anymore. Everything was going wrong. Everything felt wrong. It just wasn't right. And I didn't know what I was going to do, but I resigned. And all right, kids out there, don't do what I did because it's not necessarily the way it worked for me. It may not work work for you. I literally resigned same day effective now. So it wasn't a, I've been there for 20 plus years. Let me give you my two weeks. I think it had built up so much that it just got to the point where it's time to go. And I could hear it. I felt it. Um, Now, I remember coming home to my husband maybe a year earlier, telling him, I just want to give you a heads up that this is not for me anymore. And one day when I feel it's the right time, I'm not, I'm going to be gone. And he was so supportive, you know, so I love that about him. And I have to give him kudos for that. But on that day, I just resigned. I resigned and I left behind 20 something years, not knowing what I was going to do next. And I'm going to pause there because I know that there's some things that probably came up for you and I'm going to pause there. And then I'm going to tell you how I got into what I'm doing now. Well, I, I, I love that. Um, and Stacy, this is the first time me hearing you tell the story and I've, you know, yes. we've had many conversations. I didn't know about this. I knew, you know, you mentioned about you being in a corporate job, but I didn't know exactly what had happened and, this is fascinating because uh, 
I picked up there's so many things. I'm, I've got my notepad. Here. I'm, I'm just jotting down the key things, uh, <laughs> yeah. which is why I want to kind of reflect and pick out on those things. You mentioned the 15th year. Yeah. 15th year. And now people tuning in to this episode, if you're in uh, a job, a career, uh, myself included, I'm, I'm, you know, when I'm mentioning this, I'm actually reflecting on my own self, my own previous career. Um, yes. 15th year. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to kind of, you know, comprehend that 15 year and you're realizing at that point, not the first, second, third, fifth, even 15 years. And you're at that point, you're, you're, you're thinking, this is not what I should be doing. There's a lot of things that happen at that point when you become aware on the 15th year, most of them for me were negative. It's like, oh my God, I've, I've been doing this for the past 15 years, running on autopilot. Yes. If I wasted 15 years of my life on doing yeah. something which I'm I'm not really geared up to be, but what do I do next? Mm-hmm. Like, what do I do next? I mean, that's the next stage. And you took that step, that first step of saying, I've got people here under my care and let me start with, with them. Let me start with them and yes. you know, uh, just make their days better. Uh, and you, you said that it has nothing to do with work, but just life. People yes. coming in miserable. Okay, how how's your day today? And that's interesting because I guess these are the seeds where you know you started to coach people. Yes, yes, right? yes. Let me tell you this. I so I wrote down not wasted mm. those years. And if anybody's listening to this, that's in a job that they thought was going to be a lifetime career, where now they feel it's not aligned with who they are today. Because remember, when we started our jobs, now when on that 15th year, I was 15 years younger. So by the time I got to that point, I was a little wiser, probably understanding myself better. There have been some, there were some life shifts, right? So it's very important that people hear it's not wasted. The f- 15 years, it's not wasted. We are developing things within that time Um, skills and experiences and knowledge and resources. I developed a lot of resources that I use today as a life coach and a hypnotherapist that I developed during my time in this corporate world. So when, when, when we sit back and we go, oh my goodness, um, I've wasted 15 years or 20 years. The answer is not wasted at all. I have gained so much from, remember I said, you know, the situation I was in, I needed to be independent. So financially I gained, I was able to buy a wonderful house while I was there. And so, so there is material things that I gained, but the knowledge and wisdom that I gained about how to interact with people. Now, the business I am in right now is all people. I developed the skill from a very young age of 24 when I started with that company and developed the skill of people. And every day it just got, every year it got stronger and stronger and stronger to the point that when I left, I received all these emails and messages. What are we going to do now? Who is going to give us the inspiration? Who's going to motivate us? Who's going to make us laugh on a bad day? Who, you know, who's going to da, 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 da. So I remember just sitting back and be like, yes, I did it. I did exactly what I needed to do within those years. Right. So it's never wasted. It's never wasted. I love that you've, you've, you've brought that up because um, that's really key for people tuning in and thinking, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's not wasted. Like you're saying, it's not wasted. You're just developing the skills that you need to get to where you are now. And it's to be used moving forward. Now, I want to bring in another thing. If once you're there, once you're at that point where you realize, okay, this is not what I should be doing. I should be doing something else and um, something more aligned with what I've been put on this planet to do. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I found critical for me, at, you know, back then was, okay, I've, I've got over that, you know, I'm, I'm already, you know, set in my mind what I wanted to do. But one thing that's niggling, one particular thing that niggles at the back of my mind is other people's perception, <sighs> right? Other people's perception of you thinking, other people thinking that 
you've wasted that time. Yes. Right? Not you thinking it, but you thinking other people thinking that you've wasted that time. And that's yes. something that I found I struggled with because I didn't want to be perceived as a failure to others. Yeah. People think, yeah. thinking, well, you, you spent all those years doing, you know, in my case, architecture, and now you're doing something completely different. What's what happened along the way? Did you have mm-hmm. a nervous breakdown? Did you, you know, what, what, what happened? So that was one of the things that I found quite challenging. How was that for you to, to address that? <laughs> when you said it, I got excited. I don't know if you saw my face lit up. Like, yeah. let me dive in. Let me dive in on this. Listen, listen. One of the things that keeps us stuck and keeps us in the rut of not living our truest self and not living our authentic self. Within us is the truth. We all know our truth. We might not remember our truth, but we know our truth because it's within us. And sometimes we get a jolt, right? What we live and been living a lot is other people's truth. That's why I love my podcast, Breaking Old Generational Cycles. It's all about that. It's all about recognizing the patterns where you have been living other people's truth and say, hey, this is not even me. And being truthful to yourself and like, I don't like this. I don't like doing this. Or saying, I've been doing this because my mom said I should. My dad said I should. My society, my culture said that's that's what it's supposed to look like, right? Many of us are walking around, we're very uncomfortable in our skin, and it's not because of who we are, the truth of who we are, it's because of who we're pretending to be, because everybody else said, this is what they handed us, this is what you're supposed to be. So of course, people thought I'd lost my damn mind when I just resigned my job. So my husband was very cool and receptive of it because he wanted a happy wife because I'd worked there for so long, my salary was primary for the household. So just, I mean, it was a big move. My then six-year-old or seven-year-old daughter, she rejoiced. She was so excited because that meant mommy was going to be home to be more involved with her. My 14-year-old at the time, he's 20 now, going on 21, he screamed, oh my God, we're going to be poor. (laughs) right? And then my friends, they were so supportive, but they really thought I had lost my mind. Who Mm. leaves a six-figure job behind Mm. and go out there to do absolutely nothing for the first six months, figuring out what is my next step? So yes, everybody thought I was nuts. I still think to this day, and that was 2016 that I left, there are still people who are unsure about what I do or how I make my money, right? Mm. Yeah. I think that that's really important to for people to, to understand as well. Uh, you, you touched on a really important point there. And I, I want to bring in this quote by, uh, I'm sure you've heard it before, but I'm going to repeat it again because it's quite interesting the way that it's been put. It's by Charles Horton Cooley. Uh, he said, I am not who you think I am. I am not who I think I am. I am who I think you think I am. Okay, I'm going to repeat that one more time. It's a bit of a tongue twister and you need to kind of sit down and really listen to it properly. I'm going to repeat it one more time. I am not who you think I am. I am not who I think I am. I am who I think you think I am. Mm -hmm. So that, in a sense, says that it's the project your your perception of other people's projection of you is yes. who you assume to be your identity absolutely and this is exactly what you just said there absolutely we do what we think other people want us to do and what is accepted in the societal box constructs whether it be cultural, um, whether it be because we're identified as male or female, as a man, you have to do this, as a female, you have to do this. 
or, you know, you're the first in the family, so you have to do this. And so we all, we, we, we work from that, from those constructs that were given to us. Those are beliefs sometimes that even if people didn't say it to us and say, you have to be a this, or you have to be a that, we watched in our formative years, those years that form those deep-rooted beliefs, you know, birth to seven or to eight. And we pick up the ideals of the people around us, our parents, our teachers, or, you know, our, our community. And we think that's what we're supposed to do. That's what's going to make us successful with air quotes. And then we just, we go with it and we become, we do that for a while on autopilot. And then one day our soul wakes up and we start to feel the discomfort. And that discomfort is what I call a nudge. And that's where I see a lot of clients about is that discomfort. They say, I'm stuck. Or they say things like, I'm not that girl I used to be, or I'm not that man I used to be. I used to be driven and inspired and a go-getter. Well, maybe you don't need to be a go-getter today, right? So, but all of the things that you are, that's placed in front of you for you to do, it's not necessarily what you want to do. And we have to come to a place, as a matter of fact, I think we all come to that place. It's whether or not we accept that I am being who I am today because somebody else told me this is what I needed to be. So now I want to be who I desire to be, right? So I just want people to know that a big part of depression, sadness, and anxiety, it's because we're not living our heart's desire, or or dare I say, our soul's desire. We're living for other people. We're doing what other people say, or said. And then when we gear off, we're nuts. They've lost their minds. Like what is wrong with them, right? Because we're no longer conforming. And conformity is the death of our inspiration. It's the death of our creativity. When we conform, we have to do what is our heart's desire, what's innately us, even if it looks crazy as heck to somebody else. You mentioned about beliefs, right? Our, our beliefs, especially during the formative years. Now, I want to bring in the work that you do at the moment, which is uh, Rapid Transformational Therapy, RTT. I've actually been on one of your session, a session with you, uh, hypnotherapy. Now, before before doing the session, I was, you know, I was skeptical. I was like, you know, hypnotherapy, what is this stuff? You know, I, I have, you know, I was judging the whole thing, yes. right? But I said, look, I'm going to have, I'm going to approach it with an open mind, right? Stacey's a good friend of mine. Let's do it. Let's jump in. Blank slate. Stacey, you guide me. And wow, I just, I, I'm just taking a deep breath as, as I mentioned it in, as I'm talking here, because uh, it was, it was, a, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. It was a heavy session only because, yes. only because it was worth doing because I needed to go there. I needed to go and address those issues, which, you know, I've forgotten about. I've forgotten completely about, and it's just been locked up, right? Stacey, thank you so much. You you, you guided me and um, it was amazing. It was an amazing session. It was, you know, I, I mentioned this to you, you know, one of the exercises you gave me was to, to write out my thoughts and record my feelings the day after, a few days after. And th that's literally what I did. The next day I was just writing. I was just writing, writing, writing. And um, it was, it, yeah, it was, it was an amazing session. Again, if people listening, Right, I've, I've even I've even uh, forwarded some of my my clients, my own clients. You know, when we would, mm -hmm. we would engage in my own sessions, and I said, "Look, I feel you know a, a session with Stacy is something that you, that you might want to consider because I feel she might be able to assist you with some of the much deeper issues that you're facing with." And I forwarded some of my my clients mm -hmm. to yourself as well, and, I, and you know, feedback from them was you know they felt felt it was you know it was something that that was useful for them, mm -hmm. right? Can you describe to people tuning in out there about RTT and its impact and its usefulness in addressing some of the deep-rooted beliefs that we've developed in our formative years? Yeah, yeah. I remember your session. I remember how impactful that was for you. Mm. And I hold everybody's 
sessions so sacred because they are re they are releasing some of the deepest part of who they are. Sometimes things they don't even remember, which is why hypnotherapy comes in. Because RTT, it's rapid. It's defi definitely transformational because regardless of what comes up, it's going to shift the trajectory of your life. And it's done with hypnotherapy. And the reason why it's hypnotherapy, it's because every day we're, we are consciously living. And when we consciously live, we live from a, an ego, from beliefs, from expectations, from what we look like, what we dress like, you know, all of that. And our minds on the inside is um, there, there are things, there are these beliefs that's driving those behaviors, right? Good, bad, or indifferent. Sometimes it's traumatic um, situations you've been through. And when I say trauma, it, trauma to you is could be different from me, right? So it doesn't have to be like physical abuse or, or sexual abuse. It could simply be when I was four, my mom dropped me off at the at my aunt's house and I felt a separation and that became a big trauma, right? So what happens in, in our sessions is that once you go into, and all hypnosis is, is putting you into a deep relaxation where your subconscious mind takes over your conscious thoughts. Your subconscious mind comes in the forefront. And the subconscious mind, it's driving you daily anyway. You're an autopilot showing up in certain ways with certain beliefs about things. But in this session, you can pinpoint what's causing you to have anxiety, if it's anxiety, what's causing you to not be confident, whatever it is that you're, how you're showing up and it doesn't feel good, you can pinpoint that because your subconscious mind will give you the root. I, you know, my, my intent the, is to get people to find the root cause of why they're showing up the way they're showing up. And what we find most of the time is that the memory of their past is their opinion of that situation. And they hold on to that perception and that opinion and it carries with them through life, right? And that's what I help people is to reframe that. First, to understand it, to become aware of it, but then to reframe that. D is it that your mom didn't love you? Is it that your dad didn't love you? Or is it just as a four or five or six-year-old, your perception of that situation made it seem that way? And that's the thing about memories. Memories are created by our opinion or opinion of what you experienced in that moment. Wow. Uh, thanks for sharing that. And again, people tuning in, that that's a really um, insightful way of putting hypnotherapy and its impact, what it can do. You mentioned what you mentioned about, you know, the, you know, being dropped off at, at your aunt <laughs> uh, as a child. I, as, as you were talking, I, I, I just remembered uh, one of these memories as, as a child, you know, uh, I don't know if, if, if it's just me or, you know, if everyone has it, you know, uh, when I, when I think about my childhood now, I can only remember snippets, you know, those yes. small moments that, you know, you, I tend to kind of recall again from time to time, you know, it's the same thing. So one of them is me being lost. I, I, we, we were in the States at that time in Wisconsin. And I remember this, this is one of my memories. That I remember apart from the, the nice memories with being with friends, but this is one which I would probably put in the traumatic category. Uh, we were in Kmart and I got lost. I got lost in Kmart. And uh, I think it was just, I, you know, I just wandered off in one of the aisles and my parents mm -hmm. were, you know, somewhere else just looking at another thing. And I just wandered off. And I, I, I think, I panicked. I started to panic because, you know, uh, being a child and uh, I think at that time I, I couldn't speak English very well because I grew up in Malaysia and uh, mm -hmm. English was a second language for me. I, I, I couldn't communicate to people. So mm -hmm. I started panicking and I started crying. And I remember the security or someone took taking me to the counter um, the checkout counter and the security had to mention it on the over the PA. You know, there's a kid lost here. You know, with parents come to the front. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, you know, you hear those when when I when I go into supermarkets now. You know, when I hear that. <laughs> 
people I'm like thinking that was me that was yeah. me right at the, at the checkout counter and I remember my parents coming over and then um, they were happy to see me but I was mm-hmm. I think you know one of the kind of things that I was I guess you know traumatized uh, was that experience of being lost you know yes. being lost uh, yes. that separation of you know I don't know where my parents are I can't communicate and I started panicking. So yeah, it was quite interesting that you mentioned that and that just came to my mind. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and that's how easily things are, are triggered, right? And people may have thought, oh, that's a regular normal thing. Kids get lost here and there in, in, a, in a place. But what's happening within that child and what that child is putting um, the opinions and perception for that child, it's huge. It's huge. That can potentially, Camille, ripple effect over time. Um, you're probably really careful when you're out with your children, right? You're probably, you know, you probably mm. got them because of that memory, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's so many, there's so many things. But at the end of, at, at the core of it all is that we can rewire and reprogram our minds, because you said something about thinking these things over and over again, our minds, we have an average, and this is if you Google it, Mr. and Mrs. Google will tell you, we have an average of 60,000 thoughts per day. And 95% of those thoughts are done from the subconscious, driven from the subconscious mind. 85% of them are repeated thoughts over and over again. That's a huge number. So if you if you get stuck in a po- in an, a positive thought, then good for you. But most of us are stuck in negative thought, in critical thought, in the things that people said about us that weren't so good or are self-sabotaging thoughts. We call I call that the inner critic. So most of us are stuck with our inner critic constantly driving us. You're not good enough. That's not good enough. You're going to get rejected. You're not loved. You're not enough. And what I help my clients to do is to find the root of where that I'm not enough or I, you know, I'm not good enough and then reprogram it, reprogram it using hypnotherapy. And it's such a profound process. Yes, and I can absolutely vouch for that, uh, having been on on just one session with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, I encourage people tuning in if you want to know more about the amazing work that Stacy is doing. Actually, how do people get in touch with you if you want to jump on a call? Yeah, so, you know, StacyHenryCard.com. Uh, my name is everything. It's my um, business, if you Google me, my website is www.stacyhenry.com. I'm Instagram presence. So all of my social media is stacyhenrycard.com. And I do free um, discovery sessions where I talk to people about what they might want to um, do a RTT session on. Um, as you mentioned earlier, I am a certified life coach certified through the Jay Shetty program. And um, RTT was a certification done um, through Marissa Peer, and she's a renowned celebrity therapist, and she's uh, based out of the UK. And I found her after, you know, looking at what's my next step. And then after that, I found the Jay Shetty um, School. And all of this, the, the certifications were done during the pandemic. It's like, in the height of the pandemic, where everybody else were like, ah, I was yeah. like, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. It's it's one of those things where when you look back at, you know, at, at that moment, you know, the 2020, again, things are still evolving around the world. You know, here in Dubai, uh, cases are going up again. And, you know, it's yeah. a bit, we're a bit of a, in, in, a, in a limbo. But that moment, 2020, for me, I don't know what, how, how, you know, what it was like for you. But for me, it was, uh, I probably take it as a positive thing uh, that has happened yes. to me. Uh, and I think for a lot of people like yourself included, I think w- there was a big shift in it our lives. It was huge. It was a huge shift. You know, Camille, I think that people, we're different. We're wired in a way where our belief system, some of our belief system would have had us thinking that 2020 was doomed for us. And then there are other people who are wired where 2020 was an opportunity for spiritual growth for for them. It was my best year ever in discovering who I was. It's led me to now where I'm on this spiritual journey of seeking myself, who my true self. 
So as much as I help people to heal and to go through this journey of discovery, I'm constantly on a discovery journey for myself. And so 2020 started a deeper journey and um, learning to how to go into my subconscious mind and still my mind, meditation, meeting people with high frequency energy that is inspiring. And, uh, you know, that is all important in this journey that we're on. And so for me, you know, there's one of my quotes, my favorite goes, Rumi, um, ancient philosopher, poet is one of my favorite. I have quotes from him that I just love so much. One of, one of the ones I tell my client is the wound is the place the light enters you because a lot of what we do with the RTT session opens up old wounds, but I don't open it and leave it there. You know, we close it, but in, in order to heal it, they have to open it. And that's one of my favorite quotes, but one of the ones that resonates with me really big. And I wrote it down yesterday. I was clever. So I wanted to change the world today. I am wise. So I'm changing myself. Because I real, and that's by Rumi. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I'm wise, so I'm changing myself. Because a lot of us who are in the industry of serving others, sometimes we come out really gung ho to serving others and we forget to serve ourselves. And to serve ourselves first is to really go deep within and understand who we are to the core of who we are. And once we can do that, spiritually find ourselves, and I'm not talking about religiously finding ourselves, find ourselves through ourselves, spiritually finding ourselves, then it becomes so much easier to help others. It, it's, it, it almost is like, you don't have to do much. You just, you're guiding, right? Because you're guiding from a place of alignment and it makes it so much easier. I think that's pretty powerful there, um, Stacey. And I, I love that quote. Again, reflecting on my my own journey early on, you know, in my life, it's the same. You know, we all, you know, come out gung-ho, uh, young blood, we want to change the world. And uh, you forget that actually you need to, to be strong yourself first. You have to take care of yourself first in order to know mm-hmm exactly what it is that you want to to change uh yes. so you completely miss the miss miss the point and you know again now coming back to this is why i love coaching as a form of actually healing my own self yes uh, i find that a really powerful thing and i find joy in that because it's a it's a win-win i get to see the the um the transformation in my clients i also get to learn more a bit more about myself each time in each day i have a conversation with someone else and that's that's a perfect combination for me we go back to you know our corporate jobs the you know you mentioned about you being there 15 20 years and finally saying i'm not in alignment with what i feel i should be doing and i've been sent here to do whereas now you feel more aligned because all the skill that you skills that you've developed have got yes. you to where you are now and you are able to actually put it into proper use of yes. those skills yes there is nothing about our journey that is accident or co- coincidence or um, shouldn't have happened, nothing about it. There are some of my favorite books that I um, I read, Paulo Coelho, The Alchemist. I remember reading that book um, about 20 something years ago, a friend gave it to me and I read it then. And then years later, I read it again and I really got it the second time. I got it the first time, but I really got it the second time. And then just recently, Radhanath Swami is a um, the journey home. It's an American Swami. And both of those books, I just read that one called The Journey Home. And then I'm reading this book by him called The Journey Within. So I told you I'm in, I'm really going inward. And what I wanted to say about that, it's very similar to when we stay in a job for 50, um, um, 15 years and knowing that there's something about it, that there's something else we're supposed to be doing. These two books, 
had people. One was the alchemist was a shepherd boy looking, seeking, and he went from one place to the next. And when he came back to where he left, that's where his answer was in the first place. The same thing with the journey home. The journey home, um, this American Swami, it's in real story, in the 1960s, journeyed to India to find God. And when he got home two years later, after a lot of good, bad, and indifferent things, because he was hitchhiking, he was living the life of a Swami, of course, when he got home, what he was seeking was given to him before he left American soil by way of a pamphlet, and he came back to it. So my point to it is that sometimes our journey may seem like it's taking us around, and then we come to where we started in the first place. But without that journey, there's no way that we would be able to understand ourselves and find ourselves enough to help other people because we're a reflection, right, of, of the, the clients that we have. Wow, I, I, love, I love the way that that's been described there. Um, I, I, I actually, I'm, I'm just thinking about it in three dimensional now. It is a loop, but you're actually as, ascending to the same point, but you know, it is the same point, but you're actually ascending as you go yes. up. So almost like a spiral staircase, having gone through it, you know, you're not on the same plane, you're now yeah. elevating to a different plane, but coming back to the same point. And that's when you described that, that loop of coming back to where you are now. And I think that's really profound because you're coming back at a higher level, a higher plane. Yes. Right. You're wiser, you're older, you have more knowledge, you have more experiences, you've seen things, you've felt pain, you've felt hurt. I mean, how the heck can we help people? How can I help you, um, Camille, if I've never felt hurt? How can I help you through your hurt if I've never felt it? Right. And so that's what journeying is about. It is not abracadabra. I go from here to here. I have to feel some shit. Mm, <laughs> Am I learning yeah. how to say that? I have to feel. <laughs> I get you. Yeah. <laughs> I have to feel some stuff. You know, I love your expon. Your, I'm a visual person, so I love that. Um, see, that's the arch, the architect in you, yeah. where you can, <laughs> you you saw the building, so you saw the spiral stairs and elevating. I love that so much. You're elevating, and I, I think that's. That's a really, really powerful thing. And you you mentioned it right there about reading and rereading. This yes. is something that my dad's always mentioned to me when I was, uh, now, now I'm remembering it. Uh, when he used to study for, for exams, he said, read it once, read it twice, and read it again. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, again. Under, I didn't understand why. I mean, I thought he, it was just trying to kind of make sure that I memorize it word for word. But now I understand that it's actually each time you come back and read it, reading it again, you come back with a different perspective, with a much more, like, a, a, like you're saying, a wiser perspective yes. on things. And that's why it's useful to read. You're saying you read The Alchemist the second time around, you're seeing it from a different perspective. You know, pick up that book and read it again after a, a while. I'm going through Think and Grow Rich again. I, I, I bought Think and Grow Rich uh, in 2020. I mean, now I'm reading it again. I'm like, wow, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't pick up on the first time around, but now I understand. And I'm sure when I read it again or listen to it again, I'm going to pick up new things. So, you know, rereading and rereading is something that we just have to continue to do to, you know, it's part of the learning process of Absolutely. knowing yourself. Yeah, because we're growing every single day we are we do not want to be the person we were yesterday that person is gone and we do not want the memories of yesterday those memories should be dissipated one of one of my other books that i love so much is the power of now by eckhart tolle and he talks about the now and the it's 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 a profound thing i i think i have um i'm looking to see if i have one of the quotes that i wrote out from him because he talks about the now from a perspective where it's all that matters we don't need the yesterdays and even the good stuff you know how some people try to relive the the good moments of yesterday even that um is a no because you can never do it over 
And it will create suffering and pain trying to relive some happy moment of 10 years ago that's already gone because we're supposed to be in the gratitude of the now. Yeah, because you, you can never recreate that moment, good or bad. And it's um, like you're saying, it's going to get you pain because you're trying to achieve that high or whatever it was that you've you've achieved before. And it's now remember, <laughs> my, my brain's just going over time each time I speak to you. I, I, I'm, I'm remembering a scene from, I don't know if you've seen Napoleon Dynamite, it was a, a classic MTV film, you know, uh, back in the day. And uh, this kid called Napoleon Dynamite. He has an uncle who lives out somewhere in the fields. Every single day, he's he's stuck in the moment where he's recreating the moment where he was in the American football team back in the day in high school. Mm -hmm. And he's now <laughs> like 40 plus. He's recreating that scene of him throwing and receiving the ball. And he couldn't get, get out of that. You know, he's stuck in that moment because that was the moment where I think for him, that was the, the highest point of his life. And he's trying to recreate that, but he's actually suffering because he's stuck. Yes. So again, yes. in the same way that you're mentioning, that's been and gone. It was there. It served its purpose. But what we need to focus on is, is the now. Absolutely. Because... That's all that matters is the now. Because no matter how great the achievement was, it, it's not who you are today. So Edward Tolley, one of the summaries I wrote from his book, um, it says, our now will turn into the past and our future will be our now. The only thing that is real is now. So no need to worry about the future and stop ruminating about the past. It's, it's, it's now. It's me and you having this conversation is really, it's, it's about now. It's about the connection we're having, the, the, the growth we're going to get just from this exchange, the positive um, energy exchange. Nothing about yesterday matters to either of us. And if we can live present, regardless of how screwy our present is and live in gratitude for the fact that you're here, you're breathing, you're learning, and you probably understand to some level that that's why we're here. Life is a school, right? So we're here, we're learning. It's less painful than going in the past, looking at the hurts or going in the past, trying to recreate the good. I think that's another key thing there. I'm trying to tie tie back what we're talking about now to the what we mentioned earlier about other people's perception. Like you're mentioning right now, we're having this conversation right now, even though we've met several times before and we've connected before. Now I'm thinking about when we talk about friendships and relationships with people that we haven't seen for 10 years, 10, 15 years, and then you reconnect with them again. And then you kind of expect them to be the 15 year old version of themselves before. But when that expectation is not met, because obviously things have have gone and they're now possibly a different person. You might feel disappointed because you're like, hang on a minute, what happened here? You were like this, you enjoyed this before and now you're all, you don't fancy this, you like this, but we just have to accept them. We have to meet them where they are now because this is this present moment of their journey and not to try project the old version of your perception of what they should be. Absolutely. And that happens a lot. That happens in relationships, happens in marriages where, you know, one person is growing. We grow, both of us are growing, but one may be growing at a different pace than the other. And all of a sudden the other person gets uncomfortable because why, why is this person different? You're different. Well, no, I'm just expanding. I'm growing. Um, you know, and that that's friendship. But sometimes it's because we already got from that friend what we needed. And when we go back, we realize that we're no longer on the same frequency. We're no longer on the same vibration. And the elevation of our journey, as you so eloquently put it, Camille, going up the staircase, but still being at the same point, to me, represents each of us being the same person. I am the same person, the person I call Stacy, the person you call Camille. It's me, right? But I've expanded. I've journeyed, so I've grown. I've learned a few things. I've read a few books. I've met a few people and I'm still standing there, but I'm going up the staircase of elevated. And then there's someone that we knew 10, 15 years ago they have not moved very far because they are comfortable in their misery or comfortable in their discomfort. 
And so then we're no longer on the same frequency. So that happens a lot. People sometimes they fight that they fight when their own self is expanding because they want to stay connected to people. Right. And I say, don't fight it. They'll catch up. They'll come. If they're supposed to come along on the journey, they'll meet you. I think that's really important to, to, to point out there that, you know, just to accept people as they are and meet them where they are. And um, that's it. You know, we, we can't force them to change. We don't, we can't put our, project our expectations on them, but just be there for them. And like you're saying, if they are meant to be in your life and, you know, things are connected, that's great. But if, if not, then that, you know, that's okay too. Absolutely. Stacey, we've just gone past the hour mark here. Now <laughs> I've just barely, barely asked the questions of, uh, you know, I've got so many other questions that I want to ask, but I think we just need to have a, another session with you. A part um, two. Part two. <laughs> Again, quickly before before we 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 go to the tail end of the show because we've got yes. the quick fire round coming up soon. Just, if you can just touch on your own podcast that you have, I just want to bring Abs- that in. Absolutely. So my podcast is called Butterfly Effect: Breaking Old Generational Cycles, and the reason why I decided to do that podcast is because my, one of part of my platform is to help people to give a voice to sexual traumas, especially childhood sexual abuse. And my charge is to break that cycle wide open, give it a voice. But the podcast is about people coming and speaking about whatever it is they're breaking, whatever patterns of generations they're breaking, whether it be abuse, whether it be poverty, whatever it is. And my guests, they come on and they talk about what they're doing to break these cycles and how they're showing up in the world, breaking these cycles. What's important for me with this is that I want to leave a legacy for my children. I, I, and, and it's working because the other day my daughter says, mommy, we're going, we're going to, we're going to change the world together. We're going to just break all these cycles together. And that made me feel so proud. And um, it shows up on Anchor, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And we do a weekly publish, a weekly uh, podcast. And it's just wonderful with all these different coaches. And Camille, you'll be on soon. But all these different coaches and healers and different modalities and and regular everyday people who just want to talk about breaking the cycle. Well, I love that. And I'd be absolutely honored to be on your show as well. So um, I'm actually looking forward to it. Yes, I can't wait to have you. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, so we'll put all the description uh, of the social media, your website, the yes. podcast, uh, and everything in the description in the episode. So go ahead and check it out after you listen to this this week's episode with Stacy. Okay, Stacy, we are at the tail end of today's episode. Uh, I hope. It has been an amazing journey. It has been for me. Uh, but before we go, we're going to do the quick five question round. Are you okay to do this? I am ready. Awesome. Awesome. So this has been a tradition in the, the podcast. So the first question is, what is your favorite word? Peace. Mm, nice, simple and, 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 and straight to the point peace. I, I love it. I love it. Question number two, what are you currently reading or listening to? Um, so right now I'm reading The Journey Within, and that's by Radhanath Swami. Right. We mentioned that in, in the, uh, the episode just yes. now. So that's great. That's great. So question number three. So this is, this is slightly different from the previous episode. So I have, this is a new question. Mm-hmm. What is the worst advice you've ever received? <laughs> it, ties, <laughs> it ties with how we started this podcast. The worst advice I've ever received is graduate high school, go to college, pick a career and pick another career and go to more college. Worst advice ever to conform to what society expects. Mm, that's, that's great. And on the flip side of that, what is the best advice you've ever received? No, this one is funny. Buy good shoes, wear good shoes, <laughs> um, spend, spend money. <laughs> on quality shoes, quality that's the shoes. Best. my mother gave me that advice and i swear to god that's probably the best advice she's ever given me <laughs> of all the advice she's giving me actually you know, that, that's a good advice for me too because i keep buying you know you know low quality shoes and i keep having to go 
you know, go out and buy a new pair. Yes. <laughs> buy good shoes. Your feet deserve it. You deserve it. They last forever and they're classics. So when when the, the not so good shoes is falling apart, that one is still good. It's still good. Absolutely. Great, great advice by, from your mom there. Amazing. Okay. So question number five, last question. What can we expect from Stacey in the next five years? Yeah. So, you know, this one for me is big because I'm big at manifesting and I see things ahead, right? Um, I see myself with continuing to work on um, breaking the, helping people breaking the silence and breaking the cycle of abuse, um, focused on sexual abuse. But I also, that's my passion is to let people know they're not alone and also to have people understanding that they don't have to be quiet. But I also see myself continuing to guide people by way of hypnotherapy. I want to be the face. <laughs> I want to be the face of hypnotherapy for, for people um, to help people through their traumas and help people to be a better part um, of themselves. And I just see that. I see that down the line. I see that. I just see me doing it because it's who I am and I'm aligned to it. Wow, I love that. I, I, I'm really excited for that. But the key thing that you've mentioned there is the last part of your answer there about being aligned. You see yourself because you feel aligned to it. And I think that's absolutely key. I'm all for alignment. I've mentioned this before that I used to seek balance, but now I feel alignment is much more important because I, I can, you know, you can get balance in your life. But if you're not aligned, you're still suffering. You're still in pain because you're not aligned, even though you have balance in career, relationship, everything. But alignment is absolutely key. And I think you've you've touched on that there. And I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen in the next few years for you, Stacey. I, I'm, yeah, I'm super excited. Me too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. Same. Yeah, I've, I've absolutely enjoyed it. And I think more so because we haven't, you know, we, we've uh, we've been doing our own things for the yes. for a while, and now when we come back, you know, it's it's just like you know, just meet up with uh, old friends again and then just catching yes. up. So, but something you said in the beginning that I'm going to, I wanted to address, and I have to say it. When you said we met in 2020 through the Jay Shetty School, and we had these sessions, and you were like, "That's my people." I felt the same way. And I think it's really important for your listeners to know that we all have our people. And these people are people that's going to come into our lives. And immediately you feel the shift um, in a positive way for you, but also the alignment. And so I'm happy to be your people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so yeah. excited. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stacey. And I, yeah, um, absolutely thrilled to, to have crossed paths with you. Uh, and again, I keep going back to 2020 as something that has been a big shift in, in, in myself and being connected to people like yourself and, um, yeah, ever so grateful to, you know, to be on this journey and, you know, it took us how many years to, to kind of just connect through something that you know we we never saw before and I, I never kind of envisioned being connected to you but i hope that this is only the beginning of you know something special that's going to happen in the next few years for both of us right oh yes uh, <laughs> I already, I already have visions of us continuing to work together. I had that a long time ago. I saw me in <laughs> Dubai. I saw me in Dubai with you doing things. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. <laughs> oh man. man I, can't, I can't wait. I can't wait. Stacey, this has been an absolutely uh, amazing, like I mentioned to you guys, I hope it has been explosive. It has been explosive for me. You know, it's been an amazing session with you and I've learned so much, you know, new things that I've learned about, you know, your story. And I think that's, that's going to be insightful for the listeners uh, out there as well. So thank you so much, Stacey. Thank you, Camille. Okay, everybody, that's all the time that we have for this session today with Stacey. I hope this has been uh, useful for you. Do let us know what parts of the episode has connected with you. Connect with Stacey. And until the next episode, stay safe, stay healthy, and peace and love from us always. Bye-bye for now. Thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you are. 
My sincere hope is that this episode has not only resonated with you, but also given you some invaluable tips and strategies to improve your life. Don't forget to share your comments with me. As you know, I love to hear your views. Also remember to follow the Academy, follow me, my guests, and tag us on our social media handles, which will be provided in the description. Most importantly, please leave a review and let me know that you've heard this podcast and how it has impacted you. Until the next episode, stay safe, stay healthy, and peace and love from me always.